Are you ready for the mind-boggling, hair-raising spectacle of circus oddities? Well, if you are, roll up, roll up. We're stepping into the bizarre and bewildering world of the circus, and you know what they say, it's the greatest show on earth. From real life giants to two-headed Mexicans, these are the 20 circus freaks that actually existed. Fanny Mills Let us introduce you to the one and only Fanny Mills, aka the Ohio Bigfoot Girl, a true legend from the 1880s. Now, Fanny was no ordinary girl. She had a rare disease that caused her legs and feet to reach epic proportions. We're talking seriously gigantic. Are you ready, my brother? Her feet were said to be a jaw-dropping 19 inches long and 7 inches wide. Yep, that's like having a small boat for a foot. But did Fanny let that stop her? Absolutely not. She embraced her uniqueness and turned it into an awe-inspiring show that left audiences awestruck. Her incredible presence and larger-than-life feet were a massive hit in the Dime Museums. And her performances weren't just for show, she knew how to make it rain. We're talking about a whopping $4,000 a week. So there you have it, the sensational tale of Fanny Mills, the girl who stomped her way into history and captured the hearts of audiences everywhere. Talk about stepping into greatness. Frank Lentini It's the one and only Francesco Frank Lentini, the man with a truly unique twist. Born in 1889 in Sicily, Frank was no ordinary entertainer. Nope, he had a third leg sticking out from the right side of his body, thanks to a congenital defect. But guess what? Frank didn't let that phase him. He turned his unusual feature into an opportunity to educate and entertain others. At just eight years old, he and his family pursued the American dream and settled in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And boy, did Frank make a splash. He became a star attraction in some of the most famous shows out there, like the Ringling Brothers Circus and Buffalo Bill's Wild West show. Now, let's dive into the nitty gritty of Frank's condition. It's called heteropagus twinning, and it's rarer than finding a unicorn. Only about one in a million births have seen something like this. In the womb, one of Frank's twins stopped developing, but he kept on growing. Pretty crazy, right? As a result, the incomplete twin's body parts fused with Frank's, but here's the cool part. Despite his unique characteristic, Frank was pretty much an average-sized adult. He weighed around 175 pounds, and about 25 to 30 pounds of that weight was attributed to his third leg. In fact, he used to say that his leg had an appetite of its own. We don't know if that's cool or creepy, but Frank Lentini certainly had everyone talking. We guess you could say he had a leg up. Robert Huddleston Get ready for the amazing tale of Robert Huddleston, the one and only pony boy. This guy was a true showstopper. Huddleston had a unique physical condition known as congenital genu recurvatum, or as we like to call it, back knee deformity. This meant he couldn't stand upright or rely on crutches. Nope, he rocked a completely different style, moving around on all fours like a pro. Born in 1895 in Excelsior Springs, Missouri, this unusual guy grew up on a farm, working hard milking cows, tending to livestock and harvesting crops. But it was after the war that Pony Boy's journey truly began. He showed off his jaw-dropping abilities in a small carnival in Texas and became a sensation overnight, touring all over North America, with none other than the renowned Tom Mix Circus. And here's a fun fact for you, legend has it that he could casually throw his right leg over his shoulder. Now, don't you dare try that at home, that's some pony boy magic right there. Now that's something we've never seen before. Betty Lou Williams Strap in because Betty Lou Williams' life was a roller coaster of ups and downs. Born with a parasitic twin attached to her side, Betty Lou's life took a sharp turn when she was discovered by a showman named Dick Best at the tender age of one. He gave her the stage name Betty Lou and whisked her off to his New York museum, where she became an exhibit for all to see. But Betty Lou's life didn't stop there. Oh no, the legendary Robert Ripley of Ripley's Believe It or Not spotted her and couldn't resist showcasing her in his auditorium at the 1934 World's Fair. Her fame skyrocketed and with it her earnings. Can you believe she raked in a jaw-dropping $1,000 per week? Yup, Betty was the OG showbiz superstar. 
And you know what made Betty Lou even more incredible? Despite her struggles, she was one big-hearted gal. With her fortune, she made sure her family lived a good life. She bought a whole ranch for her parents and sent all 11 of her siblings to college. Now that's what we call family goals, but life isn't always sunshine and rainbows, guys. At 23, Betty Lou fell head over heels for a charming stranger, but it turns out he was nothing but a con man after her fortune. He broke her heart and ran away with a hefty chunk of her hard-earned cash. Heartbroken and devastated, Betty Lou faced one last challenge, a severe asthma attack that tragically claimed her life in Trenton, New Jersey. Yep, Betty Lou's story is a sobering reminder of a time when sideshows and freak shows exploited people like her for entertainment. We told you her life was like a roller coaster. Johnny Eck. Get ready to be blown away by the incredible Johnny Eck, the man known as the Half Boy. This guy was an absolute trailblazer, defying all odds with a condition called sacral agenesis, which left his legs tiny and non functional. But hey, that didn't slow him down one bit. Johnny Eck was a true jack of all trades, an artist, magician, and sideshow performer extraordinaire. Despite his disability, he pulled off mind-blowing stunts that left audiences in awe. Climbing ladders and walking on his hands were just a few of his jaw-dropping moves. But Johnny's real claim to fame came when he starred in the movie Freaks back in 1932. As the half-boy, he stole the show with his talent and charisma, proving that he was so much more than just a unique appearance. He challenged society's norms and showed the world that being different is something to be celebrated. Johnny Eck was an inspiration to everyone he met, proving that nothing, not even a disability, could define him or hold him back. Pasquale Pignon Meet Pasquale Pignon, the man who became famous as the two-headed Mexican under the spotlight of the Cells Floto Circus in the early 1900s. Now, brace yourselves because this story is a wild one. Before his circus days, Pasquale was just your average railroad worker from Texas. But fate had something else in store for him. One day, a sideshow promoter with an eye for the extraordinary spotted a large benign cyst or tumor on the top of Pasquale's head. The crafty promoter saw an opportunity to create a sensation and swiftly drafted Pasquale into his freak show, claiming he had not one, but two heads. To make the illusion even more jaw-dropping, they whipped up a fake face made of wax and placed it on the growth. Voila, the two-headed Mexican was born. Now, here's the twist. While it is possible for people to have two heads due to a rare condition, known as craniopagus parasichitis, which is conjoined twins with shared brain tissue, Pasquale's second head was nothing more than an illusion, a cleverly crafted fake dazzle to the crowds. Okay, we don't know about you, but we think it's pretty obvious that his second head is fake, but maybe audiences back then weren't so discerning. Teen Mary Ann Bevan. Roll up, roll up, folks, and prepare to be amazed by the extraordinary tale of Mary Ann Bevan, the stunning beauty turned circus sensation. Now, Mary Ann was once a real looker, but fate had other ideas. Yep, believe it or not, Bevan was actually an attractive woman in her early years, before she suffered from acromegaly. The disfiguring ailment, a disorder in which the pituitary gland overproduces growth hormones, can cause adults to suddenly begin growing again. Hands and feet may swell, and the changing bone structure alters facial features. Bevan's pleasant face became grotesque as her brow and lower jaw protruded and her nose expanded. After her dear husband passed away, Marianne faced the ultimate challenge, supporting her huge family all on her own. But wait, she had a trick up her sleeve. She decided to embrace her unique appearance and entered a contest called The Ugliest Woman. And guess what? She won the crown. Talk about turning lemons into lemonade. With newfound confidence, Mary Ann hit the circus circuit, ready to dazzle and amaze. She joined Coney Island's Dreamland side show and later teamed up with the legendary Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey show. She was the star of the show as the world's ugliest woman. Well, if you ask us, that's pretty harsh title, but hey, Mary was making some serious money. And on top of that, she found love again with none other than the circus giraffe keeper. We love a happy ending, especially when it involves giraffes. Joseph Merrick Let us tell you about the extraordinary life of Joseph Carey Merrick, better known as the legendary Elephant Man. Born in Leicester, England, John Merrick's life took a wild turn. 
when he started developing unusual deformities before the age of five. Sadly, he faced rejection from his father and stepmother, so he moved in with his uncle. But life had more in store for the so-called Elephant Man. In 1884, fate led him to cross paths with a showman named Sam Tor, and ta-da! The world was introduced to the Elephant Man. He became a star attraction, captivating audiences with his unique appearance in penny gaff shops across London and beyond. It was a real rags to riches story. Things got even more interesting when the talented surgeon Sir Frederick Treves examined our dear Merrick. They became the best of buds and John eventually found a loving home at the London hospital where he spent the rest of his days. Now the exact cause of his deformities remains a mystery, but it was said he might have had Proteus syndrome. Even DNA tests couldn't unravel all the secrets hidden in his bleached skeleton. However, audiences at the circus were led to believe that his mother had been scared by an elephant at the zoo while she was pregnant with Joseph, causing a material impression that led to his rare condition. Okay, we don't have to tell you that this is definitely not the reason behind his deformities. Merrick's life touched so many hearts that it inspired a play and a film called The Elephant Man, immortalizing his incredible journey. So, if you want to find out more about this fascinating guy, you know where to go. Fedor Jeftichu. Meet the unforgettable Jojo, the dog-faced boy. Brought to you by none other than the showman extraordinaire P.T. Barnum. This fascinating man and his father were far from ordinary. Let's start with Jojo's real name. Fedor Yedtyshev, a name as unique as his condition. Fedor and his father, Adrian, had hypertrichosis, which caused their hair to sprout all over their faces and bodies. Hunters discovered this extraordinary duo in a Russian forest and before they knew it, they were the stars of the show at a local fair. Soon they were exhibited all over Russia and Europe, captivating the hearts of the curious masses. But Jojo wasn't just a spectacle, he was a linguistic genius. Speaking multiple languages, he effortlessly charmed his audiences, making him an instant favorite wherever he went. Now, here's where it gets even more interesting. P.T. Barnum, the master of promotion, wove a fictional story around Jojo's discovery, a tale of finding him and his wild dog-faced father in a remote Russian forest. The intrigue grew, and so did the crowds. From Russia to Europe, Jojo's career soared, leaving audiences in awe. His final performance took him all the way to Greece, where he sadly succumbed to pneumonia in 1904. So there you have it, the extraordinary life of Jojo, a man whose hairiness brought joy and wonder to people all around the world. Daisy and Violet Hilton Let us introduce you to this truly remarkable pair, Daisy and Violet Hilton, the conjoined twins from Brighton, England. Born on February 5th, 1908, these two were inseparable, joined at the hips and buttocks, and their story is nothing short of incredible. Now, get this, despite being joined, they shared no major organs. Yep, these sisters were defying the odds right from the very start. Born to Kate Skinner, a barmaid facing tough times, their journey began in poverty, but fate had something extraordinary planned for them. As kids, they amazed audiences across Europe with their unique bond, and soon they embarked on an epic adventure, dazzling audiences on the sideshow, vaudeville and burlesque circuits in the good old US during the 1920s and 1930s. But hey, it wasn't all glitz and glamour. They had their fair share of challenges with various guardians managing their lives and earnings. Luckily, they found freedom thanks to the legendary Harry Houdini's sage advice in the early 1930s. Houdini to the rescue, and their star power extended to the silver screen too. They made a splash in the iconic film Freaks in 1932, and even had a movie, Chained for Life, based on their extraordinary lives. But like any great tale, their lives had their ups and downs. They faced struggles in showbiz and even had a few unsuccessful marriages along the way. But through it all, they remained an inspiration to countless people. Their amazing lives have been celebrated through musicals and documentaries, including the Broadway hit, Sideshow. And in 2022, their legacy was honored with a commemorative blue plaque in their birthplace in Brighton, England. There's no doubt about it, these two have left a lasting mark on the world. The Lion-Faced Boy Get ready to meet the one and only Lionel, the Lion-Faced Man, the star of the sideshow scene. Born in 1890 in Poland, this dude hit the genetic jackpot with a condition called hypertrichosis. 
giving him a luscious lion-like mane all over his face and body. Move over, Simba, there's a new king in town. Lionel's unusual appearance didn't go unnoticed. At the tender age of four, he was sold to a German circus owner who saw the potential in this hairy wonder. And just like that, Lionel became Lionel the Lion-Faced Man, the hottest ticket in the sideshow world. With his mesmerizing mane, Lionel wowed audiences around the globe. But don't be fooled by his fierce appearance. Lionel was known for his gentle nature and razor-sharp intellect. Lionel's fame took him to royal courts and high society events, where he rubbed shoulders with the rich and famous. He used his platform to challenge society's narrow definitions of beauty, proving that true allure comes in all shapes and sizes, and in his case, a whole lot of hair. Long live the lion, Isaac Sprague. Prepare to have your mind blown by the incredible tale of Isaac Sprague, also known as the living skeleton. Yep, this man was so thin and slender, he made skeletons look chubby. Born in 1841, Sprague had a rare condition, called ectrodactyly, which meant that he was missing fingers and toes. But that wasn't all, his body was so thin he looked like a skeleton. Standing at 5 feet 6 inches tall and weighing a mere 43 pounds, he strutted his stuff right into the world of entertainment thanks to the one and only P.T. Barnum. Barnum saw Sprague's potential and knew he had a showstopper on his hands. As you could imagine, Sprague became a sensation. But it wasn't just his bony physique that made him a hit. Sprague had a contagious sense of humor and a personality that lit up the stage. He knew how to make the crowd laugh and leave them wanting more. Yep, this guy really did have funny bones. Ella Harper Are you ready for the fascinating story of Ella Harper? Known as the Camel Girl, she was born with knees that bend backward like a camel. Ella, born in 1873, had a condition called congenital genu recurvatum, which gave her the ability to walk on all fours just like our humpbacked friends in the desert. Then, at the young age of nine, she joined the wild and wacky sideshow circuit. Under the guidance of showman extraordinaire W.H. Harris, Ella became a sensation. People flocked from all over the world to see this girl with the camel knees strut her stuff, wowing the crowds with her unbelievable moves as Ella traveled from town to town. She became more than just a sideshow act, she became an inspiration. She challenged norms, shattered stereotypes, and taught us all a valuable lesson. It's the quirks and peculiarities that make us who we are. Martin Lorello Prepare to have your minds blown by the astonishing tale of Martin Joe Lorello, the one and only human owl of the 1920s and 30s. This is no ordinary circus act, folks. Let us tell you. Lorello, a seemingly normal guy, until he unveiled his jaw-dropping trick. Drumroll, please. He could turn his head a jaw-dropping 180 degrees. Yep, you heard it right. Now you can see why they called him the human owl, but according to Martin, he wasn't born with this incredible talent. Oh no, it took him a solid three years of dedicated training to perfect this jaw-dropping feat. Now that's what you call perseverance. Born in Germany in 1885, he decided to reinvent himself when he landed in the United States, taking on the name of Martin Joe Lorello. And he was considered a giant hoot in the world of entertainment. His debut act at Coney Island's Dreamland Circus Sideshow left the crowd gasping in awe. And soon, he was wowing the masses at the legendary Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey Circus. The demand for this human owl was off the charts. Think it couldn't get any wilder? Well, think again. Martin Joe could even chug beer with his head spun around like a turntable. But hey, every superpower has its limits. He couldn't smoke or breathe in that mind-bending position. He even became a star attraction at Ripley's Believe It or Not Auditorium in the 1930s, with the tagline, the only one in the world who can walk straight ahead and look straight behind. He kept the wonder alive. Though people speculated about how this human contortion was possible, no one really had the x-ray vision to know for sure. The exact explanation remains an enigma, but hey, that's part of the magic, right? One thing's for sure, do not try this at home. Madame Gutsika Meet Madame Gutsika, known for her extraordinary stretched lips that defied the norms of her time. The famous photograph captures her with a pipe, her lips stretched out about 8 inches from her mouth. 
But as you can imagine, there's more to this tale than meets the eye. Back then, freak shows were all the rage, and Madame Gutsika's appearance caused a stir. While she was probably from Ethiopia, she was mistakenly billed as a member of the Duckbill tribe, a term that, looking back, sounds rather inappropriate. You see, lip stretching was a cultural practice in various tribes around the world, where they used plates made of wood or clay. Some tribes still carry on this tradition, while others have chosen to let it go. Now, our perception of freak shows has evolved over time. What was once seen as a spectacle for entertainment is now seen as exploitative and lacking dignity. You see, back then, there wasn't a whole lot of respect for different cultures from across the globe, and Madame Gutsika was seen as an oddity. Nowadays, we can see that she was, in fact, honoring the traditions of her birthplace. Yep, when you think about it, there's nothing that freaky at all about that. Millie and Christine McCoy Millie and Christine McCoy were the awe-inspiring African-American conjoined twins, who defied all odds and captured hearts as the United African Twins, and the eighth wonder of the world. Born into slavery in 1851, their journey began in Whiteville, North Carolina, owned by blacksmith Jabez McKay. Sold at just 10 months old to John C. Purvis, they embarked on a life of exhibitions and shows, led by various showmen. But on January 1, 1863, their fate changed when the Emancipation Proclamation, setting them free to forge their own path. In Britain, they found refuge and care under Joseph Pearson Smith, who provided them with an education. Millie and Christine became true talents, mastering multiple languages and showcasing their musical skills as musicians and singers. Joined by the Barnum Circus, they enchanted audiences as the two-headed nightingale, Millie's alto and Christine's soprano harmonized to perfection, captivating all who watched performances. Sadly, at the age of 61, tuberculosis claimed their lives, with Christine passing away just 12 hours after Millie. They may have been buried in unmarked graves, but their legacy lives on. Annie Jones Meet the incredible Annie Jones, the bearded lady who stole the show at P.T. Barnum's legendary greatest show on earth. Annie's journey began in Virginia back in 1865, and boy did she make an entrance. As she popped out into the world, her chin was already graced with a glorious mane of hair. Talk about making a statement from day one. Now, you'd think her parents would be taken aback by this surprise, right? But nope, they saw an opportunity to turn their daughter's unique trait into a money-making machine. Every cloud has its silver lining, right? Before Annie was even a year old, they whisked her off to the big city, where P.T. Barnum's exhibition was eagerly awaiting. This tiny tot was thrust into the world of showbiz before she even knew how to walk or talk. But Annie took it all in stride, and audiences couldn't get enough of her. We affectionately called her the Infant Esso, a clever nod to the famously hairy brother of Jacob from the Old Testament. Now let's dive into the mystery of Annie Jones' extraordinary condition. While the truth is still a bit unclear, experts believe she likely had hirsutism, a condition that causes the growth of coarse hairs in females in a male-like distribution. It affects about 5-10% to of women, making Annie truly one in a million. So Wong, the human unicorn. Back in 1930 in Manchukuo, a Chinese farmer caught the eye of an expat Russian banker for a truly extraordinary reason. He had a massive 14-inch horn sprouting from the back of his head. This horned wonder, known simply as Wong, became an instant sensation. And no wonder why. The Russian banker wasted no time and sent a picture of Wong to none other than Robert Ripley, the genius behind Believe It or Not. Ripley was always on the lookout for the extraordinary, and he was absolutely blown away by Wong's unique feature. In fact, he was so intrigued that he offered a hefty cash reward to anyone who could bring Wong to his auditorium for a mind-boggling appearance. Suddenly, there was a global buzz around this mysterious man, but here's the twist. Wong's fate took a mysterious turn. Just like a ghost in the night, he vanished from public eye in the early 1930s, never to be seen or heard from again. Who knows what really happened to the man with the horn? We'll probably never know. What do you think? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. Isaac Sprague Isaac Sprague was the legendary living skeleton. In fact, he was so slender he'd make a skeleton look chubby. Born in 1841, Sprague had the rare ectrodactyly condition, leaving him with missing fingers and toes. But that's not all. 
His body was so thin he practically vanished when he twisted sideways. But hey, being skinny didn't hold him back. Nope, he was a huge name in the entertainment world, all thanks to the one and only P.T. Barnum. When Barnum laid eyes on Sprague, he knew he had a showstopper in his hands. And guess what? The crowds went wild for Isaac Sprague. He became an instant sensation, stealing hearts and tickling funny bones across the nation. But it wasn't just his skeletal physique that captivated people, it was his humor and charisma that lit up the stage. Sprague knew exactly how to make them laugh till their sides hurt, leaving everyone craving more of his hilariously bony antics. It's not every day you see a living skeleton after all. Jack Earl This is the incredible tale of Jack Earl, a Texan whose life was truly larger than life. Buckle up cause we're diving into a story of remarkable heights and even greater heart. Born Jacob Rubin Ehrlich on July 3rd, 1906. Jack wasn't a Texas native, but he made his mark there, proving that everything's bigger in Texas. Standing at a towering 8 feet 6.5 inches, he was one of the tallest humans to walk this earth. Jack's journey in show business began early on, and he appeared in a whopping 48 films, captivating audiences with his towering presence. But life had its challenges, and a fateful accident left him with a damaged nose and temporary loss of eyesight putting a pause on his film career. Yep, Jack's height had a mind of its own, growing six feet tall by the time he was 10 years old. That's right, Jack probably soared way over most of his teachers. Eventually, he embraced his uniqueness and joined sideshows and circuses, including the famous Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey. And when the circus days came to an end, Jack embarked on a new adventure. He worked as a wine salesman, a PR man and even served as a deputy sheriff. Talk about versatility. There's more to Jack Earl than meets the eye. Felix Whirl Meet Felix Whirl, the one and only human rubber band. Naturally, this rubber showstopper couldn't keep his talents hidden. But the real magic was all stored in his fingertips. That's right, he could bend them all the way backward without breaking a sweat. Ouch. He hit the road with his slightly creepy talent, dazzling audiences in dime museums and wowing the crowd at circus sideshows, like the legendary Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus. Looking back, experts have speculated that Whirl might have had Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, a condition that turns you into a real-life stretch Armstrong. With skin like elastic and joints as loose as a goose, he truly was a living, breathing rubber band. As you can imagine, the crowds went wild for the elastic skin man, and he was a real celebrity of his time, and we can see why. General Tom Thumb Ladies and gents, meet the one and only General Tom Thumb, the little big shot that took the 1800s by storm. Standing tall at a whopping 25 inches, the legendary P.T. Barnum discovered him at just four years old. The next thing you know, Tom Thumb was the star attraction at Barnum's American Museum in the heart of New York City. But don't let his tiny stature fool you. This guy was a force to be reckoned with. He didn't just win hearts with his adorable looks. No, he was a true performer and a tiny powerhouse of talent. Singing, dancing, acting, you name it, he nailed it. And Tom Thumb didn't stop at conquering America. He took his show across the pond to Europe, where he mingled with royalty. Yep, even Queen Victoria couldn't resist his charm. This little superstar became a household name, his face plastered on everything from trading cards to teacups. Move over, Kardashians, Tom Thumb was the original celebrity. Yes, these are the people we worshipped before social media influencers and movie stars. It must have been a strange time indeed. Chong and Eng Bunker And finally, let us introduce you to the legendary Chong and Eng Bunker, the original dynamic duo that will blow your mind. These brothers from Siam, now known as Thailand, were joined at the sternum by a connection of flesh and cartilage that even linked their livers. Yeah, talk about being attached at the hip, quite literally. But hold on tight, because these weren't your run-of-the-mill conjoined twins. In fact, they were about to become the stuff of legend. Their fame in America reached astronomical heights, and the term Siamese twins became synonymous with conjoined twins, all thanks to these two trailblazers. Chong and Eng were inseparable, quite literally, throughout their entire lives. Yet they managed to find love, tie the knot, and start their own families. Not only that, but they also set some pretty crazy records, with a jaw-dropping 21 children between them, 
they held the record for the most kids born to unseparated twins. These guys took it to a whole new level. They became superstars touring America and wowing audiences with jaw-dropping physical feats. From somersaults to swimming, but they didn't stop there. They jetted off to the British Isles, mastered English, and took control of their own act. Talk about determination. Fast forward to today and their legacy lives on. They have a massive family tree with thousands of descendants spread far and wide. Every May, their extended family gathers to celebrate the incredible legacy left behind by their famous great-great-grandfathers. We've got a feeling no one is ever going to forget about Chong and Ang.